How the Who's Saved America by Jason Goldtrap. United we stand, we all say with pride, but too many are blind to a growing divide between those who have values and those who do not, and despise the ones for whom their nation fought. Those foul, wicked Grinches and their cadre of fiends who want to turn our land into a communist dream, the sly, crafty lawyers of the ACLU, they want to eradicate the American Who's. The Who's are those average, ordinary Joes. They work hard, play fair, and suffer the blows. The Grinches dictate idiotic social folly. They say Christmas isn't fair to the chronically unjolly. Thanksgiving sounds religious, so it can't be legal. Halloween is okay, that celebrates evil. Labor Day hurts the feelings of the unemployed. Memorial Day and Veterans Day would be safer to avoid. July 4th is so corny and silly and jingoistic. Patriotism, they say, is for the simplistic. Lincoln was Republican. Washington owned slaves. Do these right-wing extremists deserve holidays? And what about Easter in that empty tomb? Let's get rid of all this God stuff real soon. So they set out to erase the American way. They repainted the flag red, blue, and dull gray. But the Who's just shrugged and never tried to disagree. I'm too busy working, they said. Politics isn't for me. And so their malaise went on year after year. None dared speak out, paralyzed by fear. But when all seemed hopeless, helpless, and too late, a child named Cindy Lou Who said, Hey, wait. If we are the majority and they are 1%, why should we bow to them? Why should we consent? I'm an American, she said. I deserve a fair shake. Someone should do something. My future's at stake. And so this brave little girl, this overlooked lass, got out a Bible and started to read it in class. The teacher said, you mustn't. Be quiet and sit. But Cindy Lou kept reading, refusing to quit. The principal came by and demanded an end to these shocking pronouncements that just might offend. But she kept speaking and would not relent. So the principal gave up and the cops were sent. At first they tried pepper spray, tasers, and cuffs, but all of their threats she ignored or rebuffed. Eventually tears welled up in their eyes as they heard her small voice drowning out noisy lies. So they took off their badges and they put down their guns. They called the chief of police and they said, we're done. Enough with the nonsense of various sorts. We arrest bad guys and they're released by the courts. No more will we sit back and play a lawyer's game. And from that moment on, nothing more was the same. The airport security guards quit doing silly searches of kids in wheelchairs and old ladies with purses. They actually tried working instead of being slackers and vigilant people stopped the hijackers. The non who's who got here by jumping the fence were arrested and deported. That's just common sense. They rounded up the bad guys and kept them in prison. The Who's knew the real killer was O.J. Simpson. And all those vile movies weren't burned or banned. They were sent back to Hollywood and buried in the sand. And those who blasted rap music from their cars found themselves without a vehicle and behind bars. The elites were upset, bothered, and dismayed. I thought those dumb hicks paid taxes and obeyed. But once they figured out how just to say no, we'll have to leave town into France we must go. The Who's used common sense like they hadn't done in years. They even put clothes on Britney Spears. The snobs in New York were knocked off their high shelves and told to get real jobs like everyone else. And lastly, politicians who lived off Who bread had Thou Shalt Not Steal tattooed on their head. The children studied how to read and how to write, and the parks were safe and you could walk at night. Within a few days all was well, and everybody had a happy story to tell about a brave little girl, not unlike me and you, who dared to stand up and be more than just a who.